Hey, what's up? It's Jim, and today I'm going to talk about Okja. I think when most people are talking about Okja, it's because, because this is the first kind of big budget movie produced by Netflix. Or at least it feels like the biggest budget movie made exclusively for Netflix and kind of competing for the Palme d'Or and things of that nature. Now, Okja probably been criticized more as being a film that only could have been made by Netflix, as no studio in their right mind would probably ever bankroll a movie like Okja. And in some ways, that is a good thing. In some ways, that is what it is. I understand the criticism. And and, uh, people kind of feeling like well this couldn't be made in theaters so it's kind of a lesser than but in other ways I think that opens up for Netflix as great as Netflix is most of their shows eh, kind of could have aired on a premium channel or a major network or something they don't get too experimental and weird Okja is by Bon Joon-ho and is obviously going to be a little weird and strange. His last film, Snowpiercer, had equally an interesting release, even though it did get released theatrically. It was also went straight to video on demand at the same time, like doing a day and date thing. So it seems like he's never been fully embraced by U.S. distributors in a way that he would have liked. I don't think the host got a particularly great cinematic release either. So this kind of feels like the best way to release Okja because I think most of the people who like these kind of movies aren't the traditional film goers but probably actually would go to Netflix. I think Okja kind of signifies a kind of new cinematic world where films that are probably too difficult, strange, and weird uh, to have been released in theaters will still get a chance to get made and shown to a wide audience. Now that's enough with the Netflix part of this review but as for Bong Joon-ho I'm not a huge fan and my problem with I guess a lot of his stuff or at least with Snowpiercer was that it's almost a little too obvious in places. Now I like Okja a lot more than Snowpiercer and I think that's mainly because what this film is mainly about is this little girl it's kind of like a, a kid and his dog a kid and his pet and it's this little girl and Okja and her trying to get him back from you know corporate America or corporations trying to take him on and make him into this genetically modified animal that everyone can eat and that will be cheap and super yummy and uh, make that corporation lots of money whereas this little girl uh, Mija has uh, fallen in love with Okja and grown up with him and run around uh, the forests of Korea and wants to continue to be with her friend if these corporations will continue to take advantage of these animals and use them as profit and animal liberation front were called ALF which they don't make any ALF jokes in this although they spray paint ALF and I guess ALF doesn't exist in this world which sounds like a dark terrible world to me but whatever and they try to help her out as well as she kind of gets involved in the complex crazy world of the city as she grew up in the country of Korea not the like the actual country the countryside just the countryside. kind of like the typical kind of child and their pet kind of a story kind of navigating through the big city and the more complexity moral uh, gray areas that are corporations and the big city and especially America I like this movie and I like that Bong Joon-ho exists but Snowpiercer was a little too obvious where it's like yeah I get it you're going through the train and at the back of the train is the poor people at the front of the train is the really rich people and they're moving up the social ladder and it's not obvious at all but i think what okja does probably better is it combines genres and says things about that and says things about you know corporate america and greed and the need for corporations to have all these things to make as much money as they can and you could you know maybe read into how netflix is releasing this movie in their constant stream of content and how you could say okja in itself is criticizing companies that do that and take them use these things and try to make as much money as they can uh, for going how cinema theoretically should be or shouldn't be i don't really agree with that i think a movie is a movie it doesn't most of us probably watch more movies at home or on video than in the theater it's just kind of life nobody has enough time and money to go to the theater as much so you know whatever but i think the thing with this movie is i like what it's saying about corporate greed and i certainly agree with it i think really the part of this i like is little girl ninja excellently played by so Hyun An, I believe, who I think really is kind of the center of the story and probably the least interesting probably role for most people where it's, you know, the Animal Liberation Front or Tilda Swindon and the Mirando Corporation are probably more like over the top odd crazy performances the only one who's kind of a little hampered down like her is well i guess okja and paul dano who's kind of just being paul dano but understands how a paul dano role fits into this movie everyone else is kind of doing these over the top like jake gyllenhaal is out of his mind like he's trying to out tilda swindon tilda swindon and it's just like you can never out tilda swindon tilda swindon tilda swindon does that 
on a regular basis. Like anytime you think she's gone as Tilda Swindon as she can, she goes further. And Jake Gyllenhaal's just all over the place as like this crazy like crocodile hunter kind of thing. He was just like really ridiculous and like I mean it's like oh cool that you can do that, but I think Tilda Swindon understood the point of each of her roles, whereas Jake Gyllenhaal was off in space somewhere. Like, yeah, I get it, but you were just like a bit much. But I like how those stories navigate around Mija's story with Okja in that how she is kind of flung from the country in this kind of supposedly E.T. sort of newer reboot of Pete's Dragon kind of a thing where they grow up together, they have this relationship, and now when Okja is taken away by the Miranda Corporation who has sent, if I didn't say it before, sent all these pigs all around to be raised in different countries and they're going to see what is the best way to raise uh, these these uh, special pigs and everything. And then in Korea with Okja, Okja is apparently the most magnificent one and they want to take Okja away, do a big press event, and then eventually kill Okja. And I like how she is thrown into this world where like none of the people in the city seem to have a real strong belief. It feels like all adults in this compared to her are compromised in these weird gray areas and almost can't make up their minds and are at fault for almost being that. The perfect age for this might be a 12 or 13 year old because as they're getting more into serious film, this isn't something that's like a harder film that would just be completely different from what they're already accustomed to. This is very much more of a kid's movie wrapped up into an adult world, which is kind of interesting. I like what Bong Joon-ho's doing in this film and how he's taken this kind of kid's story but pushed it in the complexity of more of an adult-sounding kind of world. That was the story I followed probably the best and I thought worked the best and everything is playing off of that and that kind of gives this movie a core that really works a lot better for it because in the end as much as it's trying to say about corporations and kind of occupy millennial kind of activism and things like that at it, heart of it it's telling the story of this girl and her super pig Okja and them trying to be reunited once again and that is a little easier to follow as an audience. The difference for me between Snowpiercer and this is that this kind of has at its core something to play all of that off of and almost a reason for it you know it does get a little crazy and there are like several different genres mashing at once and it does feel a little crazy and like oftentimes I feel like with his movies I leave them and go I respect that these exist but I probably will not think about it later and I'll have other friends who really love them or really hate them but I'm always like that's all right I'm glad it exists and I've never really felt as passionate as most people do about Bong Joon-ho. I, I still like him. I'm glad like Netflix would make this and that we live in a world where an Okja type of film exists and I actually like this more than the last one. I don't know if I like this more than the host or something but I prefer this to Snowpiercer and I'm glad that a studio, any studio would make this kind of a film because it's at least risky and questioning a lot of things but I don't know if I'd ever watch it again. I don't know when this whole talk of Okja is over if we'd really be talking about it that much. I don't think it leaves an impression in the idea that it has done all these crazy insane things and you haven't seen a lot of movies do those sort of things so it's very unique in a way and it's unique in that way that like people who don't see uh, like many movies think is unique but everyone who's a cinephile is like that's interesting it did this thing i think this is probably the closest he could get to kind of more of a mainstream thing because it is based on kind of a thing that most people love which is like the kind of et idea of a kid and their kind of strange creature friend like a studio ghibli to, you know a totoro type of thing and okja i think in his best moments gets close to that but it's not just trying to do that that is just the core of kind of one of its storylines and that's something that got me through. Tilda Swin's storyline I think is really interesting, particularly the two twins she plays. She plays very well. I actually kind of prefer her performance in Snowpiercer, that kind of Margaret Thatcher-esque kind of performance was interesting. In this, some people said she's playing sort of Hillary or something like that, and that they kind of thought Hillary would win, so this would be more biting satire than it ended up being. I didn't feel that way while I was watching it, but I thought she was kind of interesting as kind of more of what most corporations care about, which is how they're perceived by the public rather than like why have all these super pigs go all over the world and do this big competition on TV and stuff. It just seems like like a, a lot of work to make money when you could have just like genetically modified this thing and released it 
you know, like why why I've done all that. And it kind of comments on like why companies do all that because does it really help? Have any of these companies become better or are we just viewing them in a weird propaganda-esque way that doesn't really help much of anything? And like kind of the ramifications of that is why Oakjin, why this whole situation even happened, you know. I often like how Bong Joon-ho, like with the host, uses a monster movie to bring up issues. I guess this is more similar to the host in that is that it takes kind of genre and kind of throws it into the satire of the real world and uses it to comment on a lot of things. Obviously, Steve Irwin, I don't think was a spokesperson for a company, but it kind of brings up the whole thing where they need that perception so much. They will do crazy things just to get people on their side. The Animal Liberation Front, probably the most of like Lily Collins in a long time, such a comment on kind of activism and how extreme they'll go and doesn't make those kind of movements look particularly great. But I like the kind of comment on it. It does get nearly close to the South Park argument, like, well, everyone's an asshole and all of this is completely flawed and all of this is messed up and it doesn't work and everyone on both sides is kind of a terrible person. But because its moral center is about this girl and her super pig doesn't feel as limiting kind of nihilism you know but that's kind of in there you know he kind of feels that way so it's there but it's not as over present because the over present thing is this girl trying to get her oak joe back that's what the core of it is and i think you know you could say sometimes if the core works well enough the rest of the film can kind of work well off of that and i think that's honestly what oak joe does so well i'm glad that bong joon ho exists there's been a lot of talk about should you see this on the big screen during its limited theatrical release which i'm sure by the time this review goes up it'll barely be playing anywhere or on netflix i think most of you will probably see it on netflix so it's probably worthless to say i didn't really necessarily have a problem watching it on netflix if you are a huge fan of him i would say go see it in the theater because you'll want to get that experience and it doesn't sound like you're going to get a lot of it in terms of this kind of auteur filmmaking i think maybe it is kind of a rare thing and maybe the only reason it will exist is to promote something like netflix and to promote a streaming service much like the only reason that okja got in the situation okja was in was to promote you know a particular company and let them make lots of money off of these certain things and as Netflix hasn't made a ton of movies as successfully as their TV shows I think like maybe going this auteur route which they're planning on doing with the Irishman from Scorsese and Bright from David Ayers and especially this is maybe a more interesting way to go certainly this is not I think a failure I don't know how well it will connect to people but it seemed like Snowpiercer was kind of one of those movies that more mainstream audiences who aren't really going to go to the art theater ever would enjoy and I think Ocha kind of works in that way as well but I think the difference between kind of arty or more prestige TV and the filmmaking equivalent are very different things because most people don't really want to see a prestigious movie I mean Moonlight didn't really make that much you know unless you're kind of more audience friendly and audience pleasing and Okja kind of is that but also kind of tries to repel you at the same time which I think is really interesting it has some really beautiful imagery in it but again I kind of really like it when it's more about Okja and uh, Mija it's a very interesting film in certain regards it gives you things to think about not you know totally complex ideas but certainly ideas to think about and be able to read into and in in that way I think Okja is very interesting but I think when I leave Bong Joon-ho films I'm like that was interesting but I don't necessarily get the hype of him as a filmmaker as much as everyone else. I've only seen three of his films I'm sure those other movies are good but as of my experience with him so far Host I really liked I don't think I've liked this as much as the Host. I like this movie a lot more than Snowpiercer I don't think I'd ever really watch this again I don't think I'd really discuss this again beyond this review and I think this will probably be a shorter review because I don't have that passionate feelings about it I know there's a lot in this I could tell there's a lot there there's a lot in the performances particularly Jake Gyllenhaal seemed to put everything into that he maybe should have put less things in that I think would have been better an odd strange kind of unique piece of filmmaking that doesn't necessarily mean it's going to be an amazing piece of filmmaking but I kind of just rest with these and go that was fine and I'm fine with it and I'm just kind of fine with Okja it didn't really make me want to be a vegetarian or anything like that but it did make me think about a beautiful story of a little girl and her Okja and their travels and fight to finally get home and get away from the complex morally gray world of corporations 
America and morally compromised adults. And in that way, I think this film really had something interesting to say. I still, at the end of it, felt it was kind of sort of just all right, but all right in kind of an interesting way. So take away with that what you will. So if you have seen Okja and you would like to talk about it, then comment below in the comments and subscribe if you would like to. Yeah.